Welcome to my new video where I show off 16 tips and tricks you could still do in the latest version of Minecraft 1.16. A lot of effort went into this video and if you enjoy it and want to see more make sure to leave a like, comment and subscribe because it lets me know that you guys enjoy it. But anyways let's get right into the video. A new type of vine was added through the nether update and they actually allowed you to do an MLG bucket in the nether. This basically means if you're fast enough, you can drop from any distance in the nether and be okay. This is a pretty cool and unique way of displaying items that let you know what's in a chest. You can also achieve the same effect by placing them on the ground. And then instead of using signs, you use pressure plates. When you place carpet on top of a sign, it sticks through and you can actually make pretty cool designs. I tried to make my own and it wasn't anywhere near as good, but hey, at least you could see how it's made. Shift right click comes in very handy here. After finding out people actually do this, I started doing it. I could see how it would be very useful. You no longer are lost because you always know where your base is. If you use an iron ignit on a golem when they're damaged, it heals them up to 25% each time. This one's a classic, but there's a lot of new people in the game that might not know this one. Essentially all you have to do is place a campfire underneath a cauldron and then it makes a cool smoke effect. This builder trick is very cool if you want to show off what kind of helmets you have. This one's been around for a while, but not everyone knows it. When using F3, you actually get told what target block you're looking at, but it ignores lava and any kind of liquid, so if you're looking at diamond ore through lava, it can tell you. If you're on a Y level where diamonds can spawn or any good ore, it's always worth looking through the lava pit just to see. People are always looking for simple build designs that make their building stand out. This is definitely one of those. It literally only takes 3 items and you can push the boat into any position. This next tip is basically the same premise as the new Nevervine, except it can be done in the overworld. When falling from large distances and then landing on a bush, it basically negates any fall damage.
If you build a lot in creative mode, you need to know this one. Basically, if you hold left and right click at the same time, it will literally just replace a block and you don't even need to break or place a new one. This especially comes in handy when dealing with stairs. I had to place four blocks there just to get a position, whereas this one, I can just left and right click at the same time and it will flip it. This tip can save you hours if you build a lot in creative mode. You actually don't need to use enderpels to get into the gateway, so if you need to save enderpels for whatever reason, you can just crawl in. This dupe glitch has been around for a while, and I wanted to make sure that it still works in 1.16, and it does. All you need to do is place fences under the portal, place the dragon egg at least 6 blocks high, and let it fall, and then it dupes. Mojang even know that this is a thing, it's been reported many times. As you can see, I'm going in with nothing in my inventory, and now I have a dragon egg and one on the ground. When drinking a night vision potion in the end, it highlights particular buildings, even ones outside of your view distance. So if you're looking for an end city, it's definitely worth taking in night vision potions. On the left, you have the amount of resources that people typically use when making beds, and on the right is how you can actually do it for cheaper. Because they don't know, most people will just dye three pieces of wool using three dye, but this just isn't necessary. You can make a normal bed and then just use one dye. These little savings definitely add up. You can actually improve your base drastically by just using barrels. When positioned correctly, they look just like cupboards. And better yet, they can actually still be used for storage and make sense. This one's an honorable mention. If you ever find yourself wondering why mobs are still spawning in your town or house, consider going into your settings and downgrading your brightness to moody, and then you can see exactly where the mobs are coming from very clearly. Having your brightness on max all the time can actually hide how bad your lightings really are. So it's definitely worth every so often changing your brightness to moody just to see if anything's being missed. I've played this game for a long time, and I know that this is a common knowledge, but there's a lot of people who join the game who are new, and they might not know this, so I put this in my honorable mention. If you put a pumpkin on top of your head, endermen won't attack you, so if you're building in the end and you can stand using F5 for more than 2 minutes, it's definitely worth it. If you're trying to take high detail screenshots, like for a thumbnail or for reddit, then going into your settings and changing your FOV to something smaller drastically improves the quality. It also removes a lot of the distortion, it's basically a focus in Minecraft. And a method you should definitely consider when taking your next screenshot. The position of the dog's tail indicates health, and did you know you can actually feed dogs rotten flesh with no negative impact? But that's it for today's video guys, I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned something at least, obviously a lot of people have been playing the game for a long time now, so a lot of these tricks might be known but to me, a lot of them were new and I've been playing for a long time. 
And with that, thank you for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already and you enjoyed the content. And this creep is trying to ruin my outro. I have other videos now on screen, so check them out if you enjoyed my content.